Ireland, Europe's last outpost before the Great Atlantic, is a small island of many contrasts. For centuries, its wealth of unspoilt natural beauty has moved poets and kings to sing its praises. Ireland's production of food and drink has always been tied to the land and to its people. Its fame for distilling and brewing is based also on this natural tradition, handed down over the centuries. Ireland's most popular ale, Smithix, continues proudly in this tradition. Smithix have three breweries in Ireland. Cherries in Waterford. McArdle Moor in Dundalk. and St. Francis Abbey Brewery in Kilkenny, where, in 1710, John Smithick commenced brewing in the first Smithick's Brewery. Kilkenny, the marble city in the heart of Ireland, has grown from two monastic sites and its famous castle. It is a city steeped in history. St. Francis Abbey was founded by the Franciscans in the 12th century. It's thought that a community of about 50 monks once lived here, some of them distinguished scholars. The brewing tradition in Kilkenny originated in the early 1300s with these monks who brewed their own light ale. John Smithick founded his brewery in 1710 on the site of the old Franciscan Abbey by the banks of the River Nore. Over the 275 years of its brewing history, which makes it the oldest brewery in Ireland, Smithix has become Ireland's most popular ale. The brewery's fame spread overseas, winning many awards. Though things have changed somewhat since the Confederation of Kilkenny met in 1642 in a vain attempt to unite the last of the Gaelic chiefs against the coming English invasion, Kilkenny's charm and character has not diminished. Kilkenny College still stands where that giant of literature, Jonathan Swift, went to school. The main body of the early Franciscan Abbey is still with us, protected as a national monument. Its unusual seven light window, one of the few of its kind in Ireland, is a perfect reminder of a way of life long gone. Standing in the centre of the brewery, the old abbey is a suitable link with a tradition started by those scholarly monks and continued today by the new generation of Smithix brewers. The heart of any brewery is its expertise. At the beginning of each day, the heads of the various departments meet with the head brewer. Each day, the business of brewing is coordinated to use the many special skills required to maintain the high standard of Smithix Ale. There are four main ingredients in every Smithix pint. Malt, yeast, hops, and water. It goes without saying that each ingredient must be of the highest quality in every brew. Today, the head brewer is going to examine the next consignment of malt before delivery to the brewery. But first, let's take a look at the process of malting. Until recently, this traditional floor malting house produced a portion of malt for Smithix. Malting is the process by which the starch in the barley is converted into brewing sugars. In order to do this, the barley is first soaked in water to start the grain growing. The grain has now started to germinate. 
Following this steeping, the grain was then spread on the malting floor, rested, and then turned at intervals over a number of days. Germination was then halted by releasing hot air through the grain, which was heated by a coal furnace. This was called kilning, which also developed the color and flavor. As a result, malt is softer and sweeter than barley. Today, the bulk of Smithwick's malt is produced by Minch Norton in Athai, near Kilkenny. Here, over 75,000 tonnes a year of the best Irish barley is turned into malt for brewing. Because each batch of malt will have its own character, the brewer likes to examine a sample so that later, in the actual brewing, he can transfer all the natural goodness of the malt to the beer. The modern techniques used by today's maltsters contrast sharply with the traditional methods. However, while technology can disguise, it can never hide the long and noble tradition it inherits. From the huge storage silos on the brewery site, five tons of malt is milled for each brew. Milling crushes the malt to produce a coarse mixture of husk and flour. The amount of each is carefully controlled. This is now called grist. The brewer explains to his assistant some of the points to look for in the mixture. The proportion of flour to husk is very important. And while tests are carried out in the laboratory, the brewer likes to examine everything, as it were, first hand. The next move is to the mash tun. This is a more traditional version, still used in Waterford. Grist plus brewing water which in brewer's language is traditionally known as liquor, are mixed into the mash tun where they are blended together at the desired temperature of 65 degrees Celsius. In this mashing process, the starch material of the grist is further converted by natural enzymes into fermentable sugars. After the stand period in the mash tun, the sweet liquid now called wort is filtered through the mash bed. Additional liquor is sprinkled or sparged onto this mash bed, which extracts any remaining sweet wort. Tests are carried out during the brewing process, updating information on the quality of the brew as it progresses. This iodine check is to ensure that all the starch material in the grist has been converted into fermentable sugars. The wort, now deep ruby in color, is run into the copper. The copper is like a huge kettle. It boils the wort. Now, the next principal ingredient Hops are added. Hops give beer its characteristic bitterness and aroma. All hops are vacuum packed in pellet form to ensure that the essential oils and bitterness properties, which impart the character to the beer, are preserved. Hops used in brewing are derived from the flower of the female hop plant. Some of the hops used in Smithix are grown locally in Kilkenny. The major portion come from traditional hop gardens in England and Europe. 
At the end of the three-hour boiling period in the copper, the wort is transferred to a collection vessel called a whirlpool. The action of the whirlpool causes any solids, hops and proteins in the wort to gather at the bottom, leaving clear wort to be decanted off. The characteristic Smithix colour is now evident. Cooled on exit from the whirlpool in a heat exchanger to 16 degrees Celsius, the next principal ingredient, yeast, is added. Smithix propagate their own yeast. This unique yeast used by the brewer gives the beer its special character. Yeast is a living organism which is used to ferment wort, thus producing beer. During the fermentation process, yeast propagates itself five-fold, so a portion of it can be used to pitch future brews. The wort is transferred to a calibrated vessel, and it is at this stage that the excise duty is levied. To calculate the excise duty, the precise volume must be measured. The volume of each Smithix brew is usually 500 hectolitres. The specific gravity of the wort relates directly to the strength of the beer after the process of fermentation. It is on this basis that the customs and excise officer calculates the duty that is charged. After a stand period of 12 hours in this collection vessel, the fermenting beer is transferred to a conical closed fermenter. During fermentation, yeast converts the sugars in the wort into alcohol and carbon dioxide. This carbon dioxide gives the beer its sparkle. Fermentation takes three to four days to complete. The beer is then clarified and stored at zero degrees Celsius for up to 14 days until it is fully matured. At this stage, quality control checks and tasting are carried out before the beer is passed for packaging. Tasting is carried out by the brewers to ensure that the beer has the essential Smithix characteristics. Freshness, aroma, palate fullness and colour. Only when they are satisfied that all these qualities have met the high standards expected can the beer be given the seal of approval. When a storage vessel is passed for packaging, the beer is filtered, which makes it brilliantly clear and sparkling. Now referred to as bright beer, it is pasteurized and proceeds immediately for kegging or bottling. The kegging plant in Kilkenny is one of the most modern high volume machines in Europe. It is designed to fill 8,000 kegs every day. Each keg goes through a thorough programmed sequence, including sterilization, before the keg is ready for filling. Specially designed forklift trucks remove the filled kegs for stacking or placing on lorries for distribution.
The bottling plants in Kilkenny and on Dork can package almost half a million bottles each day. Of course, Smithix do not just bottle for the domestic market alone. These six packs will find themselves all over the European continent. Every man in St. Francis Abbey Brewery is a quality controller. The final test is the final taste. The proof of the beer is in the drinking of it. Here, the people directly involved, using state-of-the-art technology, keep faith with tradition. They ensure the craft and individuality of Smithix Ale is maintained to the highest standards. The method, and the Quinces Abbey today, is a little different than in the 1300s, when the monks first produced their own light ale. We at Smithix are proud to carry on the tradition. Are you going for a pint? <laughs> <laughs>